name is Dr. Elena Fritz. I'm a neurologist and clinical neurophysiologist based out of New York City on the Upper East Side. I treat primarily neuroline patients, as most of you know. I just got back from ILAD, where I wanted to tell you all about it. It was a very, very interesting four-day conference with many physicians. I would say it was, it was hundreds of physicians and patients, probably close to a thousand uh, attendees, maybe a little bit less, with a lot of fun filled and very um, inspiring activities and lectures and presentations, which was a lot of fun and very intellectually stimulating. I actually presented uh, some work, including my poster on infections induced autoimmune encephalitis and how that pertained to patients with persistent Lyme symptoms despite proper treatment. So I presented my poster as well as I gave a lecture on the talk, which had a lot of attendees, which I was very, very happy about because I'm more and more starting to realize and to consider the fact that infections induce autoimmune encephalitis, which is essentially inflammation of one's brain, uh, and there are many causes that that could happen from. Some physicians believe it may be post-infectious, other physicians believe it may be inflammatory, and I believe that it most likely is infections induced, which means that if people have persistent symptoms of uh, Lyme disease and associated infections, and I'll give you an example. So some of these sim symptoms may be intractable headaches, debilitating fatigue, fibromyalgia type symptoms, chronic fatigue type symptoms, muscle aches and pains, perhaps pains um, all over the place, often pains that are more severe on one side of the body versus another, some dizziness, uh, insomnia, depression or anxiety, patients who have trouble with concentrating or complain of brain fog. All of these patients most likely suffer from infections-induced autoimmune encephalitis in the setting of Lyme disease. And so what I was talking mm -hmm. about is the utility of identifying all of the infections and treating them all at the same time in patients, as well as assessing them for this infectious autoimmune encephalitis process. And so the way one would do that is by checking certain blood work. So there are certain markers in the blood work that your neurologist would be able to check for. Some of them are called paraneoplastic panel, NMDA receptor antibodies, potassium channel receptor antibodies, anti-GAD antibodies, and there was also a very interesting laboratory that was um, present at the ILAD, uh, which specifically checks for antineuronal antibodies as well. So that was very interesting to me. So by learning a little bit more about what other laboratories do and presenting my research, I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of people, including physicians, patients, patient advocates, parents, spouses of patients who are not doing well with persistent symptoms and was able to guide them to what else they may should be thinking of. And one of the other things aside from blood work that, for example, you would want to look at is looking at a patient's MRI of the head to look for etiologies of, of inflammation, um, as well as looking at spec scans or PET scans, looking at a person's EEG, a lumbar puncture would be important as well. So these are the things that you would want to look at in patients who have infections induced autoimmune encephalitis. And once you would identify that, if a patient has positive test results, as I mentioned, they may be qualified to take treatment in addition to their treatment with antibiotics of um, immune modulating treatments. And these can be IVIG or plasmapheresis. When, they're, when plasmapheresis and IVIG are used in proper dosing and in proper way, they could be very effective in improving these debilitating yeah. symptoms that are often so severe that patients can't leave their home or can't go to school or work or really participate in life properly. So I believe that this is a very important tool and needs to be discussed. And a lot of times is overlooked and is treated symptomatically because physicians don't think or don't know of 
um, this specific condition that is plaguing a lot of patients with chronic illnesses, specifically in patients with infections-induced uh, illness, such as infections-induced autoimmune encephalitis. Hope this helps.